It's sticky and sweet. We spread it on bread and stir it in our tea. It's essential to every kitchen. But have you ever wondered how bees make honey? On this field trip, we'll hear what all the buzz is about as we explore the world of honey. Field Trip is made possible by Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. It's common knowledge that honey comes from bees, but many people don't know how they make it and what it can be used for. Honey making is a collective effort between nature and man. It's a process that involves bee colonies, native plant life, agriculture crops, and of course, beekeepers. First of all, it's important to know how uh, important bees are in our society. One third of everything that you put in your mouth is dependent on pollination by honeybees. To take care of bees, to harvest honey, it is an art. It's not really aggressed like picking pecans or doing alfalfa or doing anything like that. It's an art and, and people don't realize it. Um, when I do spa treatments, honey is a beautiful thing to use. I think that turning back to time-honored traditions and using natural things from our surroundings, I think that we should absolutely turn to those things again. Honey has been a resource for humans since ancient times. History shows many civilizations using honey for food, healing, and religious ceremony. Today, honey and other products made by honeybees can be found in many different items, from food to candles, cosmetics, and so much more. Honey was used uh, as much as 33 centuries ago, which is really quite fantastic. In ancient times, in ancient Egyptian and in the Greek era and also in the Roman era, it was um, extensively used for health, hygiene, and beauty. In the 1600s through the 1800s, the women were all the beekeepers. And they kept bees for three major reasons. Number one, they had no sugar. They used it for uh, sweetener. Number two, they used the beeswax for candles because they had no electricity. And they bartered with the excess honey. From the early 80s and before, there were just two very common problems we had with bees, either European fowl brood or American fowl brood. Basically what it is, just a disease, or a disease or a virus that kills the young, the young bees before they hatch. Now we're into uh, mites, which are basically ticks on, on bees, internally, externally. We are now with CCD, which is most common now, also known as colony collapse disorder. Uh, no common cure yet, no evidence of it, they just know that's what exists. A bee colony is a well-structured society. Each bee has a specific job, whether it's collecting nectar to make the honey or caring for the queen bee. Well, the hive itself uh, consists of three different bees in the beehive, kind of like our family. You have the head, head boss in there, you have one queen bee, you know mom's head boss in the family, and uh, she's the queen bee. She is the life of the hive. She lays, during honey flow season, one to 3,000 eggs a day. And of course, uh, the hatching period depends uh, for the worker bees who do all the work. From the inception of a fertilized egg, it's 21 days before they become adult. For a drone, it's 24 days. And for a queen, if they're gonna make a new queen, 16 days. So there's one queen, about 60 to 90,000 bees, which are all worker bees, they're all females. And then, of course, there's the drones. There's about 200 drones. They don't do much. Uh, fly out to see if they can mate other queens from another hive and the females feed them and groom them and take care of them so they have a pretty nice life. B 
Bees depend on flowers like these for their food, and they have to travel great distances to collect the nectar they need. But how do bees actually make the honey? You have to remember that the Romans called honey the nectar of the gods, okay? But what happens is the nursemaid bees that groom the queen and make honey and take care of all the little babies, they have to feed them continuously. They're the ones that make the honey. What you have is worker bees that basically go out to the flowers around you and they will do one of two things. They will either uh, collect nectar or they will collect pollen. The nectar is what honey is made out of. They come back to the hive and it's that nectar is carried. Interestingly enough, the little bee has two little compartments that like stomach-like things. One is the honey stomach and the other is where that bee uh, digests and that sort of thing. Bees pass things mouth to mouth. So they take the nectar out of their honey sack, the field force, give it to the nursemaid bees, they put it in their mouth, they mix their enzymes, their saliva, they swallow it and regurgitate it. So basically honey is bee throw up, but it's the best throw up you ever tasted in your life. Then what the process is, they'll, they'll put that real light, watery honey in the cells and they'll move their wings for three and a half days while it it's a fermentation process, a curing process, and then they'll seal it with beeswax. And the way they make the beeswax is they have a little platelet on the lower part of their abdomen. They gorge their cells with honey. All three different uh, bees in the hive have two sets of wing. Uh, they can move one set to heat, one to cool, and they'll keep it at about 95 to 97 degrees, gorge themselves with honey, force out wax out of the platelet, and then seal the hive. The, the honey when it's uh, cured. And of course the reason they do that is because they're always worried about having enough honey before the first frost. And then of course if they don't have enough honey before the first frost they'll starve to death. Because once the frost comes, kills everything. Not all honey tastes the same. Actually, there are 300 different varieties of honey in the United States. Each flavor depends on where the nectar comes from. Well, basically, bees make honey from almost everything that has a flower. Honey comes in all different forms. We, when we have a wet year, we'll make 10 to 15 different types of honey. And of course, all the flowers are different. You know, the bees have to visit two million flowers to make one pound of honey. It's a lot. but. A little bee only makes one eighth of a teaspoon of honey in her lifetime. But of course there's hundreds of thousands of bees that rotate through that hive so they can make a lot of honey in a short period of time. Honey is not necessarily honey the same in two different places. A lot depends on whether you're eating local honey or you're uh, depending on a honey source that has been brought in from another part of the United States or another part of the world for that matter. And some of the color and the taste of honey will vary based on the flower in particular that the bee collects the nectar from. Well, my favorite in the Southwest is acacia honey, but it's very difficult to get in around New Mexico here. Uh, generally, you can only get it in small amounts, and it has to be from a real specialty beekeeper that puts our hives where the acacias are, and that's white thorn acacia. But the more prevalent one around here would be mesquite, and mesquite is the next finest. It has just this incredible flavor to it. And there also, we have like a valley blend here uh, in, in the Mesilla Valley, and you get wonderful flavors from like the alfalfa that's grown here, and sometimes with the cotton and other wildflowers mixed in there. So, you know, the, the local honeys are really wonderful. Uh, there's reports that if you eat the honey, you get some of the pollen in there and that pollen will help you with the allergies. So it's, um, it's a wonderful product, like I say.
Bees are important little insects. We rely on them to make our honey, but farmers rely on them to pollinate the crops that feed America. In seed production, bees are uh, very important. Unless uh, a crop is wind pollinated, it has to be pollinated by insects. And the insect of choice usually is, is honeybees because they're readily available, they do an excellent job, they work in all kinds of conditions. For example, we've used in the past uh, alfalfa leaf cutter bees. And they work fairly well. What's nice is they don't actually sting you, which is kind of nice. But they only like the flowers that are on the sides of the top because they don't like to hang upside down. So in our large ball of flowers, there's actually some flowers that face down and they won't pollinate those because they don't like to hang upside down. And then for any particular crop that's producing any kind of fruit, it, those flowers need to be pollinated uh, to produce that fruit. So any melons, um, any tree fruits that need to be pollinated, um, that aren't pollinated by the wind, need bees in order to do the job. And so we really see the impact and what bees have on agriculture when there's a shortage of them, as we've had in the past couple years. We will construct um, a metal frame and put a covering over top of those flowers to prevent any other pollinators from coming into those flowers, but also containing the pollinators that we put into that cage. And usually we'll put a, a single beehive into that cage. The bees work the flowers for about a month until the plants are done flowering. You can actually see it in some of our, our cages. There are some bees that stay local that will pollinate and recover nectar from just the flowers in the cages. And then there are always some bees that are bumping up against the top because their job is to go out um, a further distance and recover nectar. There's some, we usually put a small bucket of water in the cage because people don't think about this, but bees actually do need water. And then there's some bees, their job, you can tell, is just to get water. In the nectar of the onion flowers, there actually is some sulfur compounds that, you know, are the characteristic onion flavor, and that's not too appealing um, to the bees. And I've been told that the, the honey is not so good from onion flowers. It has a little onion taste to it. And our beekeeper, I don't think, harvests any of the honey from the hives that uh, we use. We rent uh, a beehive and we pay $65 to rent that hive for about a month's time. And that's actually inexpensive compared to in California, they may spend $150 to $175 to rent a beehive just for a period of maybe three to four weeks. You look at bees as far as agriculture and the pollination, I mean, their impact is huge, not only for their pollination of a lot of different crops, but there's an industry built around that. Honey, but also pollination is a big business. One of the things that has been kind of implicated uh, with colony collapse disorder has been the stress that are placed on these hives because oftentimes they're moved via truck from one location to the next and they travel more than some of them we do in a year's time. And you know, they kind of like to be in one place, I suspect, for a period of time, exploit the, the native population rather than having to be moved every month to a different location.